Welcome back to making a factory game. Things are really starting to heat up. First, I just want to say that I've been a bit sick for the past week and a half or so, so my voice may sound a bit off. I feel a lot better than I sound, but thanks for putting up with it. In the last video, I introduced the initial building blocks of the game, including the wiring, conveyor belts, and oven. Last time we looked at the oven, it was just spitting out cookies at a fixed interval when the oven was powered up. Now though, our oven can actually bake some things. I worked up a model for the cookie dough that we're going to be baking. Then I made a metal pan to put the balls of cookie dough on. I brought the models into Unity and made the cookie dough placeable. So to bake it, you just line the balls of cookie dough on the pan and pick up the pan. Keeping with the theme of everything being physics based, you have to be careful not to bump into things and knock the cookie dough off the pan. I know this may be a bit tedious for players at first, but my theory is that it'll make the automation process more satisfying down the road. So once the cookie dough is in the oven, it will turn into cookies after a set amount of time. Right now I just have it set to a bake time of 10 seconds. I'm going to be playing around with timings as I work on the game to get a feel for what's most fun. If you leave whatever's baking in the oven too long, it will start smoking and burnt. Uh, the cookies that are burnt won't be able to be sold and you'll have to dispose of them, so you'll want to be careful to take them out on time. Since I made these changes, there's not any way to put cookies on the conveyor belt automatically, uh, which is a bummer considering this is supposed to be a game about automation. But I've been changing a lot of things behind the scenes to get things ready for automation soon. Aside from the actual baking, here are some things that I've been working on. Conveyor belts. I made them a bit smaller because I think it works better with the current simple machines that we have. Later we'll probably have some wider conveyor belts to accommodate more items. When you're placing a conveyor belt now, you can scroll the mouse wheel to increase the amount that you want to place. This makes placing conveyors easier and much more enjoyable. I added rocks to the game. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. The ground just looked a bit too bare, so I worked up these rocks and put them in the game in about an hour or so. So, yay. As for other aesthetic changes, there's less grass now so the visuals are less busy, and it's easier to see things placed on the ground. To make the ground look better than a plain green, I added this simple grass texture, and it looks pretty good with the thinner grass sticking up. I simplified the tree models a bit, and I think it fits better with the more stylized look we're going for. I also started adding level of detail to some of the objects, so the models are easier to render as you get further away from them. For example, on the cookies and cookie dough, if you get far enough away, then the chocolate chips aren't rendered. Adding level of detail for objects as I go along means I'm making the game easier to run and won't have to fight as much for performance increases later. I added walls and floors. Or I tried to, but the walls are proving a bit tricky to place right now, and I really need to make an update video. So the walls will be working next time. For now though, the floors are just a plain metal, but they'll come in handy soon when players need large flat spaces to work with. Saving games. Saving was a bit tricky to implement at first, but it's definitely worth the effort so that I can debug things without setting up all of my objects for testing each time. The hardest thing about the save system was saving the connection between nodes. I had to store the positions and connections between each wire node, which would be fine if it weren't for the fact that the nodes are connected to lead nodes that are on larger items. But we can't store the lead nodes like normal because they have to remain children of the larger objects. It was probably overkill, but I reworked the whole node system to not use Unity game objects. Which might sound kind of strange because you know, I'm using Unity. But basically the wiring system is now its own separate system that just has one Unity game object used for rendering the nodes and their connections. So anyway, with them just being pure data now instead of game objects, they're a lot easier to load in and it will just be easier to manage in the future. Games are being saved in the file called breadboardsave.json stored next to the game executable. There's no save manager right now, so to save different games, you can just rename the save file. This method of storing objects as text will also help us down the line when we go to add multiplayer because we'll be able to tell each player's game exactly where and how each object needs to be shown from the server. Quit button. A super simple quality of life improvement that was an easy win. I know that the pause menu looks absolutely horrible right now. It's kind of just to have the bare minimum of functionality. I'm going to spend time making it look better later down the line. This isn't visible to the end user, but I changed the way that collision detections are done on objects about to be placed. Before I had to line up a collision box for each object perfectly and then play around with the object's offset to make an object placeable. Now all I have to do is attach a script to the object called placement collision check and type in a ground offset. 
This may not seem like much, but it's been making things go much faster on my end. So hopefully I can churn out features more quickly with this. Another thing is that now when you drop objects, they keep the velocity that you had when you dropped them. I think this looks much better than before where you would drop an object while running and it just stopped moving and fell straight down. It's also kind of fun using this to throw stuff around, which I've been doing a lot of lately. So if you go and pick up something like, oh what's this? If you pick something up, you can throw it by running with it, dropping it, and then stopping. If you haven't noticed yet, there's also a new smooth animation for picking up objects. This was necessary th for things like the baking pan, where you can set objects on top of the baking pan. If the object just teleported to your hands, the physics wouldn't work for the objects to stay on top, and they would just remain in place. So that means that I can actually have the cookie dough as rigid bodies, and they'll move to your hand with the baking pan. So that's about it for now. I know that things may be moving a bit slowly right now, but behind the scenes things are cleaner now, and I think we're setting things up for easier development. Thank you for all of the comments on the last video and all of you who subscribed. I'm going to do my best to make the game as fun and interesting as it can be, and interacting with you all is really encouraging. I've set up a discord now, thank you to Joey Lowell for the suggestion. So if you want to hang out, the link is in the description. It's just me right now, so don't leave me hanging. Alright, see you next time.